Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rich HD and welcome back for another video of Star Citizen and in today's Star Citizen video we are going to be checking out the huge caterpillar. Now as always guys before I look at the ship in more detail I'm just going to go over the stats really quick. So the classification of this ship is transport, its role is cargo hauling although it is highly module and can adapt to most roles. Its manufacturer is Drake. Its length is 11.57 meters. Its beam is 32.58 meters. Its height is exactly the same at 32.58 meters. It weighs around 188 metric tons. Its max crew is five. It carries 512 cargo boxes. Its maneuverability is pretty good too, at 2 times size 4 primary thrusters, 8 times size 2 maneuvering thrusters, 1 size 4 power plant, 1 size 3 shield, 2 times size 1 coolers, 4 times size 4 manned weapons, 4 times size 1 unmanned weapons. It doesn't carry any missiles, it carries 48 flare, 24 chaff, it also has a jump drive and a tractor beam. So that's it for the statistics of the Caterpillar and uh, what you've all been waiting for. Let's have a look at this beautiful, beautiful ship. So first thing first, we'll start at the front as we always do. And uh, the first thing you notice is these teeth. Now, originally I thought these were gonna be weapons, uh, but they're not, they're actually sensors. Uh, to assist the pilot in flying this very lengthy ship. So you can see it has a cargo door at the front. It also has four modular um, bays that can the doors can open both left and right hand side of the ship. And that's where you store all your cargo. And you can actually swap the four cargo bays out for uh, other modular uh, bays. For example, you could have like a, a medical bay in one, maybe a torpedo bay in one, or you could turn it into like a fully fledged gunship. That'd be pretty good. You can tell why they gave this ship the name Caterpillar for its numerous uh, landing gears. And this ship is asymmetrical. Um, doesn't look too asymmetrical. But on one side, on the left hand side, you've got the command module. And on the right hand side, you've got a wing with an observation deck and also a tractor beam. Also on the inside, it's not very symmetrical as well, but uh, I'll save that a little bit later on in the video. See the landing legs in more detail, fold up inside the body of the ship itself. Got these, uh, really bright blue LEDs there. And you will be able to uh, change the the paint work or the skin of most ships in the future. So if you don't like this skin, you can actually change it. You see uh, the movement maneuvering thrusters underneath the Caterpillar to assist it on launch. And these are probably intakes perhaps bit of a um, a lighting bug there with it being darker in one place compared to the other this is the 
command module which can actually detach from the ship or the main body of the ship and can act as its own ship so it's like a, a removable brain <laughs> uh, it's got its own thrusters and uh, should we say life support on board so it can uh, keep the crew alive you can see two of the guns here underneath one there and one there and there also is two on the top as well so you've got an altogether of four size one unmanned M3A cannons, laser cannons and the command module actually does have two decks uh, the pilot ha is the uh, the top deck and the bottom part is where the crew uh, sleep see more maneuvering thrusters here it's a little bit like the uh, the herald not as nice looking as a herald but it's very similar to the herald especially with the engines at the back I, I think they're pretty much identical to the herald they are definitely identical especially with the uh, the three pipes there going into the main engines that is definitely taken from the Herald, no doubt about that. I'll also leave a card at the top right -hand corner of your screen. If you click that, it'll take you to the Herald review I did. Uh, what we got there? Emergency fuel points. This is one of the manned turrets underneath the ship. There's also one at the top front of the ship. See these very sizable. M6A laser cannons, and I think actually, do you know what? Let's do it now. Wonder what it'd look like if we had two apocalypse Gatling guns. <laughs> oh yes. I mean, these overheat a lot, but imagine the firepower you get from this, and and the feel you get from just shooting so many bullets. That, that'd be quite cool. That. I, I'd like to see that in the future when I'm uh, flying this caterpillar. So you can see the huge engines at the back. It's very similar to the Cutlass. If you're familiar with the engine layout of the Cutlass, um, you'd, you'd think these would rotate on a pivot, just like the Cutlass, but I don't believe they do. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Look at these massive thrusters. This thing can travel really fast. I believe it's 930 meters per second. I believe it is. I could be wrong. But it's, it's, I know it's definitely over 900 meters per second. See these uh, huge landing gears. Folding to the rear of the ship. And I believe in there you've got your chaff and your flares. Just in case you're uh, under fire. By missiles, you got some kind of anti missile defense. Again, engine wise, very symmetrical on the uh, the rear half, except this side, you've got the like a wing with an observation deck and a tractor beam, so you can pull in cargo, crew, smaller ships, and so on. Really cool. I can't use the tractor beam at the moment. It's not a feature implemented into the game yet. So I think we've pretty much covered the bottom part and the sides, front and rear of the ship. Huge intakes there. Pretty much similar on the other side as well. So uh, how do you get on board, Richard? Well, there's a dedicated lift here that you can use. I'm just going to show you. Very nice, and uh, we'll just take it back up again. Very cool. The sounds and animation on this uh, ship are quite something. I'll actually show you it again twice, uh, the mechanism of the pistons working there. So this is it going down. Really cool sounds and animation, and it coming back up. Really.
really nice. So this is the main entry point into the ship. So we got some heaters, storage, emergency supplies, got a dedicated gun rack here. Uh, so if you needed to uh, put your weapons somewhere, you can put them here. Got lots of uh, bare circuitry, wires, tubes, pipes. That's definitely the Drake's theme when it comes to making ships. Functionality over personality. That's what I say. This is the habitation area. This is where most of the crew would sleep and live. More storage, emergency supplies. Looks like a, uh, a cooker. Got a sink here. A lot of storage on the ship. Got its own uh, toilet and shower. Not the best looking shower in the world. Not the best looking toilet, but if it gets the job done, got nothing to complain about. So we've got some beds, four beds on the other side here, where the crew can of course sleep. Got some terminals here that we can't interact with, but maybe when the game is released, you can interact with each and every control panel and terminal in this ship. Got some more here on this bench, possibly where you can eat your food as well as keep uh, keep an eye on the ship. So this is one of the cargo modules, or one of the modules that you could swap out, but at stock, when you first buy the ship, it is a cargo hauler. Now, the reason how I've worked out that this is, it can carry 512 uh, cargo boxes, is that I worked out that the right hand side carries 72 boxes, so this carries 72 cargo boxes, and the other side it carries 29, because the catwalk takes up about a third of the uh, left hand side. So altogether, per module, it holds 101 uh, cargo boxes in each module. So there's four of these. So we're in one. This is two. This is three. And this is four. So in all those four cargo modules, it carries a total of 404 boxes. And in here is another cargo area, which is right at the front of the ship. But this room is slightly different in comparison to the other four. And I've worked out that it carries 54 cargo boxes on the right and 54 on the left. So the total that the front of the Caterpillar can carry is 108. So I worked out that 404 plus 108 brings a grand total of 512. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, work some, working out, work out an idea of where the boxes and how many boxes would fit in each module. So we're right at the front here. Got some uh, more circuitry being exposed here. Got these huge pistons that move the uh, the front of the cargo bay here forward. And I'll show you that in a minute after we've looked around a little bit more. Got all these pipes and wires everywhere. Literally is a uh, a ship with no skin. <laughs> so let's have a look at the the animations. We can actually reach it from here for some reason. So this is it opening it up. It's really nice. So it moves forward and then it opens up. And the idea is that this floor that I'm standing on right now actually moves down to the floor. Uh, so you can load cargo in and out of the ship. But right now you cannot do that. Uh, it's same with the uh, cargo modules down the, uh, the midsection of the ship. They do open out and also the bottom part of the door acts as a ramp. So let's have a look at the... The animations. It's a 
really, really cool animation. It's got all the piston pistons working. Quite realistic as well. The sounds are fantastic as well. So the second floor is up there. So we'll have a look at that very soon. But just for an example, uh, I'll show you the mechanism of one of the cargo modules. So you can see this would go down very similar to the front of the ship as well and you'd load and offload your cargo that way. We'll just close it back up and the, mechan the main mechanism is here so let's see if we can see this. Yeah look at that, it's really cool. And again sounds absolutely fantastic. It's exactly the same on the left hand side of the ship. So we're just going to go up this ladder. So now we're on this cat catwalkway. And here is pretty cool. So this is the front of the ship. And uh, we can actually have access to... The cargo door from here. This is like a, an observation window. Really cool. And also up here you get access to the top front turret. So let's go ahead and... Uh, show you what it looks like in the top turret so first impression pretty good field of view and visibility not too much on left and right because you've got these uh, huge panels with a little window but uh, yeah I'm, I'm really impressed with the amount of field of view and visibility that you get you can see the turret get access to one, two, three, four, five panels. So you're well informed of what's going on in the ship. You can see the uh, two size four M7A laser cannons, or I could be wrong, they're probably M5A laser cannons. I think they're M5A lasers. I'll have a look on the, uh, the outside of the ship, show you the top side. Almost looks like the turret can actually pull forward a little bit more. They look like uh, tracks on the front. But uh, it's just for cosmetic uses. Massive ship. You can see there's a, um, a docking collar right in the center of the... just on the last... Uh, cargo module module you can see the guns there on top of the command module as well see quite a few maneuvering thrusters as well and of course the uh, the works all the pipes going into the thrusters Let's get out of this turret and show you the rest of the ship. Again, there might be a few clipping or graphical bugs here and there. Has to be expected because this ship is still. Well, the game is still in development. So, this looks like a panel, probably to have a look at what cargo you have to manage your cargo. Component housing. I remember in the uh, the video, the grey box video of the development of the caterpillar, uh, they were supposed to have some displays actually folded down to interact with the cargo itself. But it looks like they've changed the idea for a simple panel on the rail there. But I could be wrong. They could actually have more displays somewhere. Access panel up there. So again, very all, all the command mo uh, cargo modules, sorry, are identical. Now we're just going to go down 
this ladder because this is the last one until we hit the main body of the ship and this again is the habitation room this is the lift access and into a new part which is the lower hallway so you can see again a lot more uh, tubes, pipes, wires, circuitry it's just for easy repair and maintenance and this of course is the engine room look at the size of these engines absolutely massive and it looks like a, an engineer actually gets his own terminal or should I say terminals, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven terminals he can access with. Holy crap. So uh, he can get access to components, uh, he can manage the shields. He's got components there. It's going a bit weird because I'm supposed to have a mouse, or a cursor, sorry, when accessing this, but it doesn't seem to work. Come on, there we go. But you get an idea. You basically can access all the uh, the power and functionality of the ship. Bit of a weird animation coming out of that terminal there. It's got an access point going up to the second floor. And this is the second man turret facing underneath the ship. But this is a bit buggy. Uh, it's a bit glitchy. Because when I got in this last time, my hands were broken. <laughs> and... Oh, dear. Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah, you can see this, this bit is a bit buggy and glitchy right now because my character's hands are broken in... I don't know. 50 places right now uh, that that looks kind of painful you know <laughs> but uh, you get the idea it's exactly the same visibility as the one on top uh, so yeah let, let's get out of this and also getting out of the man turret is very glitchy as well yep there we are inside the ship itself and we're alright <laughs> So yeah, that, that is a bit glitchy, that bottom turret, unfortunately. Um, but I'm not going to take the ladders up. I'm going to take the stairway access. This is also another way of getting inside, or getting to the second floor. See a very cool walkway. And this is leading to the centre hallway. So this is the tractor beam observation deck. So whoever has whoever's looking at this terminal can control the tractor beam on the right hand side of the caterpillar. Right now you can't use the tractor beam even in flight. But uh this is probably one of my favourite places in the caterpillar, just because of the field of view and visibility. You could almost call it a observation deck really. Loads of uh pipes, circuitry going on in here back into the centre hallway this is the EVA access so I'm guessing in this room uh, this room will be pressurised and depressurised, decompressurised so here is the uh, docking collar but we can't open it or use it just yet because they haven't added that functionality in just yet. Got all this uh, rusted piping. Gives the uh, Drake manufacturer a unique look. More storage. Lots of uh, panels here that can re be removed so you can get access to all the circuitry behind all the panels. And here, of course, leads to the walkway in the 
cargo modules. So back again into the center walkway. And let's go in here. And this is the server room. See all the uh, servers here. Very similar to the Herald, but the Herald seems to have a lot more servers and room for data than uh, inside the Caterpillar. Mind you, the Herald is designed to be an information runner. So this almost looks like a panel or a table that can come down which the uh, the engineers can access. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just a panel. I don't know. This is the power plant. Really cool. So you can actually see the power plant. You get access to it. Maybe uh, have emergency repairs. Check everything's all right. Emergency shutdown. Looks like there's a, a lever there as well. Maybe it's to turn it on and off. Manual start. This is the jump drive access. So remember in the engine room there was a ladder. And this is the ladder. This basically comes into the jump drive room. Of all the uh, terminals, circuitry. All of that. So back into the power plant room, into the upper hallway, and then back into the center hallway, and then lastly, into the command module. So this gives you an idea of what the uh, what's behind the panels, because uh, someone's removed this panel off. Got some batteries there, system access pipes. Gives you a pretty good idea, guys. So, go into the command module, start at the front of the ship, so we've got two seats at the front, one for pilot, one for co-pilot, let's sit in the pilot seat, can we sit in the pilot seat? Doesn't want to sit in the pilot seat. <laughs> Come on, you know you want to. No. What about the co-pilot? Not even the co-pilot. Interesting. Hang on, let, let me uh, try something, guys, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Right, so I've just respawned the ship and see if this will fix the problem. Yeah, there we go. Nice, so it gives you an idea of what the... Uh, the UI would look like, and all the terminals being switched on. You can see the uh, the primary weapons, or the unmanned weapons at the pilot control. Everything that a pilot needs to have. Cool looking uh, steering wheel there. <laughs> Very basic. Again, pretty good visibility and field of view, except all these huge beams that's uh, supporting the amount of uh, glass that's at the front here. But yeah, really, 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 really pleased with that. Get in and out of the pilot seat very quickly. What about the uh, co-pilot? Oh, bit of a bug there. But once we're in, we're in. We've got a bit of a problem with our hands as well. <laughs> Again, he's got pretty good visibility. I can't see this guy being a co-pilot though, because he doesn't have a, uh, a joystick or some kind of steering mechanism uh, to control the ship. But he gets access to a single panel. Would be nice if he had access to other panels as well. But, saying that, I guess that's where the other two seats come in. Because two other people can sit at the back of the command module. And also keep an eye on other systems. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's uh, the top of the command module. Let's have a look at the bottom part. So 
So here's the bottom part. So first of all, we've got a shower and a sink. Pretty nice. Got some more storage and emergency supplies. We've got a handy fire extinguisher next to the, uh, the cooker there. <laughs> and also another sink. Got four beds. So got a bench here, very similar to the one in the habitation room in the main body of the caterpillar. Got a huge storage container here, as well as a door. Can't get access, can't use this door, sorry, but I wonder where the uh, where it eventually goes. Maybe this is just an emergency way of getting out. Perhaps. And uh, we've got like a small observation window here with a uh, terminal in front of us. Very nice. Very cosy. Let's head back up. Let's head back outside. We'll go through the uh, the module bit. There we go. Through the crew quarters here, and then to the lift. And we're going to take the lift down. And we'll just send it back up. Very cool. Very cool indeed. So that's pretty much it of my, should we say, hang at all review of the Drake Caterpillar. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Uh, share your thoughts in the comment section below if you have a caterpillar, what are your thoughts on the caterpillar, if you plan on getting the caterpillar, uh, all that stuff. And uh, also click that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this in the future and also support my channel. And um, this might be my last video before... Um, the end of the year and if it is I would just like to thank each and every one of you that has supported my channel this year has been absolutely fantastic and um, I've just really enjoyed myself so again to each and every one of you that has supported me this far um, a massive massive thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, I really do appreciate it and uh, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> so, as always guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next universe. Bye guys.